I'm so, so honored to be here. Thank you so, so much for the Jane team for letting me be here. I am so excited. Um, so you're here for the, you don't have to know it all webinar. So when I originally was thinking, okay, what topics do I want to talk about today? My first thought was what are the biggest questions or the question that I get asked the most on my discovery calls, on my coaching calls, on Instagram. And I knew that that had to do with websites and tech and really SEO. Everyone loves to ask about SEO. So I knew that I had to address that stuff. So we're going to dive into all of that stuff today. A little bit of about me though. Let's go down. There we go. I'm just checking the chat real quick. A little bit about me. I am a physical therapist in the United States, in New Hampshire. I own a private practice. We focus on orthopedics and pelvic health. I do have experience in concussion rehab, uh, pediatric PT. I was a PDPT for about three, two and a half years-ish. Um, I started my online business, however. I married my two passions. I took my tech background and my physical therapy background and said, I love two of these things so, so much. I'm going to marry them. And so now I have the pleasure of working with other health and wellness entrepreneurs on all of their tech needs. So I work with physical therapists, chiropractors, fitness professionals, nutritionists, all of the above. And I absolutely love it. Um, I, I say that I do executive and creative solutions for health and wellness entrepreneurs. And you see some examples there. What I really like to say is that I do everything except for Facebook and Google ads. So anything else underneath the sun, I can help you with. Um, so that is really all about me, but this is about you. So let's move on. This is what we're doing today. We're going to talk about ideal client websites, SEO, and then my tech recs. So as I said, I love tech. Tech is my thing. So I have a huge passion on making sure that folks are informed. I feel like a lot of people get really nervous when we start to have our own businesses or we're looking to build a business and we're thinking, I didn't go to school to own a business. I didn't go to school to build a website. I didn't go to school to learn how to get my business found via SEO. And it's okay to not know all of that stuff. And that is why I wanted to talk about these topics because I'll be honest with you, I could talk for hours on every single one of these topics. So today you're going to get that 4,000 foot view. You're going to get some actionable steps that you can go forth and do today if you really want to. And we'll see where it takes us. I'm going to answer, answer some questions at the end as well. So if you do have questions, please pop them in the chat or raise your hand like Destin had said. And otherwise, let's get started. So in the chat, I would love if you could give me, whether it's an emoji or you can type it right in, what's one feeling you have around tech, your website, systems, automations? What does that feel like? That's what I want to know from you all. And I want you to just pay attention to everybody's responses here in the chat. We see some freaking out. We see some, oh my God. Okay. Some people love it. I see the, I see the love sign out of date, overwhelmed, yikes, the mind blown, not terrible. Okay, cool. Drinking water from a fire hose. Absolutely. It's like the first couple of weeks of PT school. You're like, please save me. Please save me from this. Love it. Frustrating. Love it, but frustrating. Cool. I, I like that you love it. Love it, but frustrating. Good, good, good. Jane was a life changer. Absolutely. Absolutely. On that. Nate said too many options. Yes. Options are huge. So you can kind of see this, the similarities here. Some people really love tech. We have a few people, right. Who are really saying like, eh, tech's okay. I'm good. And then some, most of us are thinking, oh my God, please help me. Tech is not my thing. I've actually had some people say, you know, if the tech part wasn't a part of my business, I would feel hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> or if I had someone to just do everything on the computer, then I'd be okay. And I hear you. It's literally most people that I work with, um, which makes sense, right? I do tech. They reach out to me for tech. I see people who don't like tech. So we're going to kind of boil some stuff down today, make things actionable and give you some really easy tips that you can take away to essentially make you feel a little bit more at ease. Okay. So first we're going to talk about your ideal client. Now I'm pretty sure I can only see some of your faces, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you have likely done an exercise where you, you take like Teresa, who's 40 years old, who lives in a community and she has two kids and she makes this amount of money, right? As your ideal client exercise. And you talk to that person. I'm going to flip that on its head a little bit. Okay. So first let's talk about what an ideal client is and why that's important. We have to niche down. 
we have to niche down and we have to be specific with who we're talking to. A lot of the time when I talk to people about SEO and I talk about websites, I ask them who their ideal client is. And they're like, well, I treat neck pain, back pain, concussion, I can, anything, walk in my door and I can treat you. 100%, I understand that. As a clinic owner myself, I understand what a value it is to be a generalist. We, are, we come out of school as generalists typically, regardless of what profession we are, right? But there is something that most folks cater to. Our clinic is pelvic health and orthopedics, right? So there are some topics that we generally cater to. It's super, super important to do that niche down. The scariest part that people will say to me on a call is they'll say, but if I do that, if I take my website and I take my marketing materials and I just talk to, I'm going to use the word power lifters. If I just talk to power lifters, does that mean that I'll never treat a runner again? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. In your waiting room, you will still see runners and you will still see general people with knee pain. It's just about who you are trying to talk to overall, because the thing is, is when we look at websites, we look at SEO and we look at content. If you are someone who is trying to build content, whether it's blogs, Instagram, maybe you're on Facebook, whatever it may be, would you agree that it's very difficult to build content all the time around every topic you could possibly talk about? That's hard. That's hard to do. One day you're talking about TMJ. The next day you're talking about what types of food you should eat. The next day you're talking about knee pain. That's exhausting, right? And then we all know what it feels like to go to somebody who's a specialist. I have blonde hair. I go to Instagram and I look at people's work before I go book them. And if they don't have blonde hair on their Instagram, I don't go see them. And I'm sure you can relate to that, especially my blonde haired people. I like to make sure that someone is a specialist in what I want them to do for me before I go see them. Our clients are the same way. We want the best of the best, okay? So that's why it's really, really important to niche down and be really specific about what you do, who you help. I want you to take a picture of this slide because we're not gonna go through this exercise. This exercise usually takes about 30 minutes for in a general seminar, but I want you to do this. This is my flip on the ideal client. You're going to go through your who, how, where, what, and the ask, all right? You'll see examples on the right-hand side of how to actually go through this exercise. With this exercise, you are really nailing down who you actually want to help and how you help them, okay? When you go through this, the point of this is to get to that bottom line and say, I help power lifters in person, whether it's your specific town, and I help them have decreased shoulder pain. I help them have less shoulder pain when they run. I help CrossFitters. I help little kids move better, whatever that may be, okay? This is a flip because usually we're trying to talk about this one person that we're marketing around, but we never think about our own services. And then we're like, cool, well, Jean, who is 40, who lives in a certain town can have a lot of problems. So now I must become her generalist, right? Instead, I want you to think about what you actually want to treat and go through this exercise. And you're going to come up with exactly who you actually want to help and what services you help them with. The point of this is when you go to do your website, this is how you talk about stuff on your website because you know exactly what you're going to talk about, right? So I do client exercise. If you do this, I want you, if you feel comfortable with it, you can feel free to post about it on Instagram, tag me in it. I would love to hear about it. And I'd love to hear any questions you have. So please make sure you take a picture of this. These are the pages you absolutely positively need on your website. Home, about, services, contact, and a blog with a star on it. I know people get really, really uh, up in arms when I say you need to blog. I get it. I hate long form writing. As someone who doesn't like that long form writing, when I see that I need a blog, I'm like, oh God, another thing I need to do. I get it. The blog is starred simply because if you're going to start creating content, which we're going to talk about shortly, if you're going to start creating content for your ideal client, that's the best place to do it. A lot of people will say to me, or I will say to my clients, I'll be like, where did you find that information? And they're like, Google, I Googled it. And I'm like, oh, why are you Googling your symptoms? But the thing is, is we have to understand that this is going to happen regardless. So we have to put information out there. So there is a potential for us to then come up in front of our patients. We want good information to be out there. We want them to read good information. Let's have a block. I have a couple of questions I want to just go in there for. 
WordPress is complicated if you're planning on doing it yourself, 110%. That's why I never recommend WordPress for anyone that's in health and wellness sphere, because unless you want to pay someone every time WordPress, you can do it by yourself. Don't get me wrong. There's some techie people who are definitely good, but I don't like it to be one of those situations where you have to spend money every single time you want to update something. Melissa said, thank heavens. I just talked to my clinic about using Squarespace. I love it. It's great. Absolutely. I love it too. Laura said, how often do you post a new blog? That's a great question. Blogging and content creation in general, I tell people that you need to do what feels good for you. I'm not going to be, it's, it's kind of like the, it depends answer. We all know that as uh, health and wellness practitioners, it depends. If you feel good posting once a week, cool. If you feel good posting once a month, cool. I just want you to be ready and good in creating content, make it consistent. So I like when your blog is on the same website as your website, right? Because now that domain name gets a lot of SEO with it. So for what it's worth, I would have your blog on your actual website. So if it's www.xyz.com, keep everything together. And we'll talk about SEO at the end, Nicholas. I promise. Promise, promise. All right. So websites 101. This is what I think. You need to think of your website as a virtual extension of you. It is your chance to let your personality shine and show the world what you're all about. Don't hold back, add your own flavor, toss in your messaging and make it undeniably you. Your website should be like your favorite hoodie, comfortable, casual, and unmistakably yours. I want the people, I can only see the people who have their camera on, but I want you to nod your head if you know what I mean when I say a sterile website. You go to any old website and you're like, oh God, again, it's the same thing. And it feels sterile and it feels stale and it doesn't feel like it has any personality in it, right? So my biggest value and what I want you to take away is like put your whole personality on your website. You can put your opinions on there. You can say, heck no, that's not what we're about. And that's okay. You wanna know why? Because I can tell you how many people will call our clinic and they will say, I read your website. And they'll say one of two things. They'll say, the first thing they'll say is they'll say, I'm not really sure if I'm for you because you talk to athletes and I only like walk with my dog. Like, do I still fit into your clinic? That's the first thing they'll typically ask. Like, do I actually, am I a good patient for you? And then the next thing that they'll typically say is they'll say, I read your website and I really liked what you said. I liked your messaging. People want to hear exactly what you think they want to hear. What would we want to hear a practitioner say? I'm for you. I understand your pain. Let's do the thing, right? Put your personality on there. It's so, so important. So we're going to talk about two different pages. The rest of the pages are going to be talked about in that website planner, but we're going to go through two of my most important ones. All right. So your homepage, your homepage is your business's sales page. I want you to think of your homepage. Like if someone landed on your homepage and they never went anywhere else, they should know all of these things. Okay. Think about it. You have seven seconds, seven to eight seconds, the stats say, to grab someone's attention. Typically, people will spend between 15 to 20 seconds on a page. So you might read this and you might say, Lex, that's a lot of information. I'm not trying to like make this homepage really, really long. 100% don't. Don't make it long. We'll talk about how to not make it long shortly, but you want this to be short. You want it to be scannable, but you want this information to be on there. Okay. This is super important. I have social proof bolded because social proof, everyone wants to know how someone else felt after they worked with you. Everyone wants to know that. Think about the time. It doesn't matter where it is. You either go on Google reviews to see a business and you're like, cool, Sarah, who I have no idea from two towns over had a great experience with George. I'm going to George's clinic or like on Amazon, we go to buy a product and we're like, I have no idea who this person is in Illinois, but they love this, this electric thing that I'm buying this, this elect, this, uh, air fryer. I'm going to buy the air fryer. Cause that person loves it. Right. We love, love, love social proof. Um, Mary, that's a great point. Mary said as mental health practitioners, we can't use testimonials totally, totally. And I know that a lot in Canada, you can't use a lot of testimonials too. It's so, so difficult to not be able to, I totally understand what you can do if you, if your college will allow, I've had a lot of people try it, try this is they'll write a blog post about like a case study. And then that case study would then be used as a testimonial, but it's not people's actual testimonials. So I've seen them try to get around it with that. I understand it's such a frustrating thing. And I'm so sorry because it is one of those things that people really, really love. I get it. All right. So do, 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 I mess anything up here. 
Can everybody hear me okay? Is it working? Are we good? Okay, I, just, I saw a comment on my sound, so I wanna make sure. Okay, cool. Tricky with clinical counseling, 100%. And the confidentiality thing is so huge, so, so huge. I just want you to think about any sort of case study. And if you can't do a social proof, let's try, let's try to focus on the transformation, right? Focus on the transformation that you can provide for people. Someone went from X to Y because I worked with them. Teresa asked about Google reviews. Yes, hold that thought, 100%. Google reviews are amazing. Get more. That's my biggest tip, get more, okay? So we'll talk about that a little later. If you wanna check out our homepage, renegademovementperformance.com, that is our clinic. You'll see what I mean when I say it doesn't need to be in a, a zillion miles long as far as the website goes, okay? So we'll go to that website shortly, um, but if you want to check that out on your own, you can as well. All right, so services page. This is important. Our services page, you have to tell them how you're going to help them and be relatable. So this is a direct quote from our website. We will help you get out of pain and get back to training without having to hold back. Just want to perform better and, a high, and at a higher level. We've got you covered for that too. That's totally different than if you go to like a sterile website, right? People love this. People will say, I actually read like, you'll, you'll help me like do better as an athlete. Like, is that, is that true? It's, it happens because of how we market on our website. So be relatable, relate to people. Hey, you know, I know you have pain and I know that you have probably been through the ringer with the healthcare system. I'd love to get you where you want to go. All right. So on your services page, you can start to talk like that. Be super relatable. Who do you help with that service? Who do you actually help? Is it CrossFitters? Is it moms? Is it, you know, people who run? Is it people who have desk jobs? Who do you actually help? And then the biggest thing is what is the service called in their language? And what I mean by that is what words do your people use? I cannot count how many times and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to down on anybody for doing this. I am trying to give you a recommendation to go change something so that you can get more people. People don't tell you that they want to improve their neuromuscular control. That's not what people say, but people will say, I do neuromuscular reeducation. And I'm like, no one cares. No one cares because no one knows what that means. Tell them what you actually do. They want to get strong. They want to get more flexible. They want to have less pain, right? How are you going to do that? You're going to give them more neuromuscular control. Okay. I'm a PT. So I use a lot of PT analogies. So I apologize for those who are not PTs, but I am a PT. Um, so you want to give them what they want packaged, how they actually need it. Right. And that quote I got from Shante Cofield, the movement maestro. So, and I actually don't know who originally said it, if it was her or not, but, um, you want to give them what they want, package how they need. All right. So let's take a look real quick. So on our services page, this is our introduction telling a story. You might have a nagging injury, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So we're talking to the person who's actually looking at this website. We've been sidelined before too. We get angry, yada, yada, yada. Right. Then this is the important part here. We're talking about, let's do this. Our approach is different because, and we love it because it works. As a human, you're not a mathematical equation. One size fits all doesn't really work, yada, yada. This is my part that I want you to pay attention to. How we can help improve your strength and range of motion, help you move best and minimize asymmetries. People always say that in their subjective report. People said I have asymmetries, I wanna fix it, right? Prep you for strength demands. We don't need you, we don't need, you don't need to be injured to come see us. Sports specific stuff. What I'm getting at here is subjective reports. Subjective reports. People will tell you exactly what they want to hear on your website in your subjective report, right? If you're talking to someone, they will say, Hey, look, I, my shoulder hurts and I really just want to get back to CrossFit. I really just want to, I just really want to push press 200 pounds overhead. We will help you lift stronger, lift more weight, right? We'll help you help you max out your lift. Okay. So focus on that outcome, focus on the transformation that you're going to give to people. Everyone with me there. If you, if I can, if you, yeah, we're good. Cool. All right. Focus on that transformation. So once again, I gave you the link to that page. You can check out the website. It's all there. Let's talk about my website do's and please don'ts. Cause I like to say, please. So please don't. Okay. So do's, I want you to book a brand photography session. Brand photography is huge. I know it's expensive. I know it's one of those things where you're like, Oh God, I got to like do makeup. If you want to do makeup, I got to get my hair done. I got to find clothes please book them. Having great photos on your website is literally the best thing you can do. You can look at this picture and say, oh, who do you work with, 
right? So if I go back to our homepage, you can say, oh, cool. They definitely work with people who lift weights, right? That tells a different story, right? Oh, they definitely work with people who have this pelvis, a pelvic, a pelvic anatomy, right? They definitely do that. You can tell a lot about photos or a lot about your practice just by having good photos. Okay. So great photos, hugely, hugely important. Empty and white space. So empty space. We see how there's a lot of white space on this website. A lot of space around things. We're not like cramming stuff to the edge. We're not cramming stuff up top. White space is huge. Leave white space on your website. Okay. The eyes need room to breathe. If your eyes cannot move, if people's eyes cannot move, uh oh, uh oh, if the eyes cannot move and there is a break, there's no place for them to breathe. It's kind of like when I'm talking, right? If I don't pause every once in a while, you're like, oh my God, I'm drinking water from a fire hose. It's the same thing for people's eyes. You have to give them room to move your eyes. Okay. I appreciate the sound updates, peeps. I'm looking, I, I see it's good. I see it's bad. So I'm, I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's good. Um, brand consistency. You need to keep your colors the same colors, the same fonts, the same ready for this, write it down. Typically you need four to five colors. That's my sweet spot with one, one being a really dark, like black or dark blue and one being white or lighter gray. Okay. And then the three others are like brand colors. And typically you need two fonts, one for your headings and one for your paragraphs. Okay. You can find great options on Pinterest. If you don't have brand colors or brand fonts yet. So brand consistency, just keep it consistent throughout your website. I've seen people who, Hey, Nate, I appreciate that. Nate said my sound is the best it's been on a webinar. That makes my heart happy because I love this microphone. <laughs> so I was a little bit mad when I was like, Oh my God, my sound's bad. This is bad. Um, so make sure that you keep that brand consistency throughout your entire website. Make sure you don't essentially put one font on the home page, one font on the next page and the next font on the next page. Okay. We want it all consistent. You get it. Relatable copy. I've given you multiple examples of that. I feel like you already know where I'm going. Put your, put your personality on that website. It's the best thing in the world. The best. Okay. Bullet points and scannable text. I have it bolded for a reason. A lot of people love to write paragraphs, like long, long paragraphs. I call that a text wall. People don't want to read it. Remember how I told you you have 15 to 20 seconds and that's like the maximum amount of time someone comes on a website. People want to scan and think about our own behavior. We oftentimes don't read the whole thing unless it's like a blog post, right? We might read that whole thing, but still, guess what? We're still making it short. We're making it scannable. We're giving bullet points. We're giving numbers, right? Lists. I want you to think about this on your website too. Large paragraphs. People don't love it. They won't read it. Okay. They won't read it. Make it short, make it sweet. Please don't listing every single service and diagnosis that you treat, that you do all the things I have had a lot of people come to me and they're like, they have cervicalgia, neck pain. Well, I know it's the same thing, but back pain, foot pain, Achilles tendon rupture. They have every single possible thing that you could treat as a PT. That it's not that it's a bad thing that you are a generalist and that you're good at everything. But like I said, niche down. People want to see that they are who you work with. They want to know that you're good when the healthcare system is like it is. And everyone knows what I mean. When the healthcare system is what it is, they don't want to waste their time. Nobody wants to waste their time. Everybody wants to know that the person they're seeking out, the person they're paying money for is going to help them. Right? So be that person, be that person for the person that you want to work with. Think about your perfect patient who you could spend all day with. I have one in my head right now. I could spend all day with this girl. And that's who I want to treat all the time. That's who I'm going to talk to. That's who my services are for. Okay. Not talking to your ideal client. You get it. Text walls. We just talked about it. Having a one page website. I know, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a landing page. The reason why I say don't have a one page website is because there's not room to grow and it's really bad for SEO. Okay. So one page websites are really hard. You can't have different pages for different services. It just makes it really difficult. So don't have a one page website. Make sure you have multiple options for pages and your ability to grow is there. Don't have a lot of calls to action. If you want people to book a discovery call with you, that should be your only call to action. If you want someone to book an appointment, that should be your only call to action. Okay. I see some people try to say like, 
book an eval, book a discovery call, book this, book that. People get decision overwhelm. We know this, it's happened to us, t- us before too. Oh God, am I, should I do an eval? Do I do a discovery call? I don't know what to do. People will get overwhelmed really fast. So make it really, really easy for them to do whatever it is that you want. For us, it is to book a discovery call. And you know what makes it really amazing is Jane. If you go to our Jane website, you'll see that we've actually broken up discovery calls into a discipline. So that way the discovery call is right on the top. It makes it really easy for them to book. We've had no complaints. People book them right away. So, so easy. Okay. Make it easy. And don't use stock photos. I know that people are going to be like, but I don't have brand photos. I know. I told you to get them. I know. I know. It, it, I know. <laughs> I also know that it's hard to find people who will work with physios, especially who do a lot of movement-based stuff because they're used to a lot of manual therapy stuff. But I, if you contact me, I have no problem and I can actually send it out with this presentation. I have a brand photography guide. I'll put it as a, an opt-in for you all on the same, like the same with the website guide. And you can hand it to any photographer and say, this is what I need. I made that because I, I also do brand photography. And I was like, you know what? No one knows what they're doing. Cause I had to hire someone for our clinic photos too. <laughs> so we need to make sure that people know how to shoot what we need. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Heather, would you mind popping that question into the Q and a, I don't want to miss it. I'm so sorry. I just don't want to miss it, but I want to answer all, all of the questions at once just to make it easy. I appreciate you. Thank you. So stock photos. I say it with love. I say it with all the love. Okay. So SEO search engine optimization. This is essentially getting your business found on Google. If you are a brick and mortar practice, this is super, super easy. If you're a mobile clinic, it's in the middle. And then if you are someone who operates fully online, then it gets a little bit more difficult and it just takes longer. So have that expectation management, okay, of how long it takes to show up on Google. So I'm going to give you some things that you can do to improve your SEO today. All right. The first thing, understand your ideal client and target that person. Remember how I said it's really, really hard to develop content around TMJ, knee pain, neck pain, all the things when you're a generalist. This is why it's important to niche down. Because if I talk to power lifters, I can make 14 posts about how to do X, Y, and Z exercise to improve X, Y, and Z thing. I can do a lot of like, but how do I do this thing as a power lifter? If my shoulder hurts, like modifications, I can post all the things. Okay. So really try to niche down. That's why number two, create content for your ideal client. And don't be afraid to give away every single thing, you know, everything. I also learned this from Shante Cofield, Movement Maestro. People will look at all your content on Instagram. They'll look at your website, they'll read your blog, and they will still pay you to say it to them. A lot of people will say, I don't want to give away everything I know because then they're not going to come see me. I promise they'll come see you. They'll come see you over and over again, because you know what? They want it to be said to them and they want it to be specific to them. What you do when you create content is you, you break that trust barrier. That's important. We need people to trust us, right? I don't know that you can treat knee pain. If you don't talk about ever treating knee pain, I don't know if you work with cyclists, if you never talk about a cyclist demand, right? So give away everything, you know all the way. And that's where that blog comes in. That's where Instagram comes in. If you're an Instagram person, give it all away for SEO content will always be queen. Put that content on your website, make a blog. Okay. Content is queen. You have to develop content as for SEO. And here's my suggestion. People will always say, well, how much is too much? And when do I do it? Because I don't have any time because I'm a clinic owner or I'm trying to build a clinic and I have no time. I always recommend in your schedule that you should put one to one and a half hours as a block in your schedule to create content every single week. Make it a, make it a thing. You have appointments with patients, have an appointment with yourself to create content for your business. Okay. Simple as that. Just like an admin task. All right. Make it fun. Buy yourself a little a treat. You like Starbucks or Tim Hortons, buy yourself a coffee, get a little treat and sit down and do some content. I promise it gets better with time gets better with time. And then it becomes so, so automatic that you're like, nope, it's my content time. Sorry. I can't, I can't be bothered right now. Okay. 
My next one, separate pages for each of your big services. On our website, you will see we have different pages for pelvic health, orthopedics, dry needling, recovery care, and then our Renegade RX program. Those are our big, big services. SEO, that top title, this top title right here. Boop, boop, that, that title is read by Google. It should be in what we call, and you can write this down and Google it for your own website platform. It should be an H1. Heading one, if you do anything on your website, you know what I'm talking about, H1. That H1 title is so important. That's why when we have an all services page, right? We also break it up into a pelvic health page, okay? Are you with me on that? So we do all different pages and this is why, let's tie it back, you don't want a one page site, okay? It's all coming together, I hope. It's all coming together. Google my business. Someone asked about, uh, reviews, Google reviews, 100% Google my business, get a Google, my business. A lot of people say, I don't have one. If you're a brick and mortar practice, you need to Google my business online businesses technically don't qualify. So if you don't see people in person, you technically don't qualify. And I'll leave it at that. I do have people who use it anyway, but I'm just going to say the general rules here. Okay. Get more testimonials. Google likes it when you have 50 or 50 or more Google reviews. So if you don't have 50, I would push. I have a lot of people who actually send out an email to their client list and they say, I'm really working toward a goal. I really would appreciate it if you would review my business on Google. It's so important as a small business, yada, yada, yada. People love to be asked for reviews and that's when we get the most reviews. That's when my clients get the most reviews is if they just email everyone and they say, hey, look, I would love if you'd write us a review, okay? So just ask people. People want to, they want to support you. They want to, okay? I know that's one of the concerns that a lot of people have is they're like, well, how do I get them? Just ask, just ask. So Google my business post updates regularly. So there's a little section on Google, my business where you can post an update. If you post a blog post, post the blog post as an update. Simple as that. Google likes to know that you're active. That's how we do that. So if you post once a month, if you post once every other week, whatever it may be, then just post that update on that Google, my business. And Google will say, cool, this business is still a thing. This business is still active. Simple as that. Okay. I have someone who just posts, um, her monthly newsletter. She'll take like a snippet of the newsletter and she'll just post that on Google, my business or like updated clinic photos. She'll do that too. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know the, the Google reviews, the Google reviews. Um, Melissa, can you pop that question in the Q and a for me, please? just so that I can answer them all at the same time. I don't want to miss your, your, your questions. Um, yeah, the Google reviews thing for different, uh, colleges. I, I really wish it wasn't a thing. And for mental health practitioners, I know it's, it's hard. Um, I get it. I'm sorry. I wish it was different. Stinks. Um, post update regular. Okay, cool. My last one, people are going to look at me. I, I don't know if anyone in, who has their camera on has this, but stop using Linktree on Instagram. Anyone know what Linktree is? You know what Linktree is? A little link in your bio on Instagram. Stop using it. Don't use that. I have a blog post that's free. It teaches you how to make a link page on your website. Put that Linktree on your website. Then you're giving your website all those clicks, not Linktree. You with me? So someone's on Instagram, they go to Linktree to go to your website. Now Linktree gets a hit and then they go to your website, right? Oh, hey, Kristen, you're the best. Kristen just dropped the actual blog post in there. That's for Squarespace. If you have a different website platform, Ready? All it is, is a page with buttons. Just put buttons on top of each other. Okay. Take off the header, take off the footer, put your logo on there and you're done. That's a link tree. And then it's on your website. Okay. Get that SEO, get those clicks, get those hits. Okay. So that is one of those things people are like, oh my God, but I love link tree. I know it can be like prettier, I guess, but all it is is a page with buttons. So I feel like I should show y'all. This is mine. It's a link tree, but it's on my website. Okay. So it's on the back end of my website. It's a hidden page. You'll see all that in that blog. Okay. Great way to improve your SEO. Did I miss anything? Sidra asked about H1. I can explain that. Sidra, can you drop that in the Q and A? So this is your homework. Before I get to the questions, your homework is go forth and do that ideal client exercise. I know there are people who came in late. This PowerPoint will get sent to you. I'm going to send it to 
Kristen, maybe Dustin. I'm not sure. I'll send it to someone and then we will make sure that you get it. Okay. If you have trouble and you get to that ideal client exercise and you're like, what questions do people ask me? I know that all of us can come up with a list of like 20 different questions that people ask us in the clinic every single week. I know we all can, right? Do I need an x-ray? Do I need to get an MRI? Right. Should I still come to you if I have an ankle sprain? Things like that. If you go to answerthepublic.com and type in any, anything, you're going to get a list of hundreds of questions that people are actually Googling. It's so cool. I love it. It's one of my favorite softwares. If you have trouble creating content, go there. Okay. You'll get a lot of ideas. Conduct a website audit. Use that website freebie that I gave you and do a website audit. Go through your website. Do you have all those things that I talk about? Start creating content for your people. Stop using Linktree with an exclamation point. I saw someone commented on that. And level up your tech if you're ready. If you're not ready to level up the tech stuff or change any tech stuff, or you feel like you're all good, cool. But you have the stuff that I recommend, okay? And I also wanna say once again, if you do the ideal client exercise and you want to post about it and tag me, I am more than happy to share your stuff. And I'd love to hear from you. I don't think I missed. If you asked a question in there, can you pop in the Q&A? I saw, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Anka, Anka, Anka. Can you please pop that in the Q&A? Because I'll answer it 100%. Cheryl, you too, please. please, Pretty please. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Okay. And Jennifer too. And then I'm going to go right down the list. So we're doing Q&As now. Is everyone ready? I'm going to pop this over so you can, oh, let me get, th get through this. So ways I can help. All right. So I have Squarespace templates. If you don't have a website, go to my website. You can see that I have Squarespace templates. They're built for health and wellness entrepreneurs. So I found that people can't necessarily do the design piece, but they can do the insert their copy piece. You get a fully built website to your email and then you just copy. You literally put your text in there. I have a few people on this call. I've seen some names who have used my templates um, you will likely see their website listed on my, um, on my website through all the templates. So that's one thing that I do. I also have SEO school. You'll see that on my website. If you want to learn all the things about SEO school, I will be opening up that again in 2024. Thank you, Leanna. I saw you were on there. Um, SEO school just closed for enrollment. So we're doing that in 2024. Coaching calls, I can help you do all the tech stuff. I absolutely love it. I'm one of the people who's like fist pumping on the other side of the call. As you can tell, I talk really fast, but I love doing it. We get a lot of stuff done in a small amount of time. And then while I answer questions, I'm going to leave this up so that you can check out all the things. I do want to do a special shout out because Jane sponsors my podcast up in my business. Some of these questions I might actually pull and use on my podcast, just so you know. So I might actually elaborate a little bit more. We'll see what happens. Um, but I would love if you ever want me to cover a certain topic, just DM me on Instagram and I can do that. But Jane is the lovely sponsor of my podcast and I appreciate them so much for that. So please listen if you have time. Um, this was so great. Like I just wanted to quickly jump in if yeah. that's okay. Cause I had a couple of things came up for me that I wanted yeah. to also share with the community, but, and we have lots of, lots of questions in the Q and a, um, a couple of people said they posted them in chat. If you want to pop them over into the Q and a, that's just in the bottom of your screen and you'll see that. Um, happy to stay on anyone that needs to drop off. We'll just keep recording. Lex can go through the questions. We can stay as long as you can Lex and we can answer all of them. All of the answers will be in the recording. So you'll get those even if you have to pop off now. And I just wanted to, a couple of things came up while you're talking like tools and stuff that I wanted to like add into the recommendations as well. Um, so one of the ones that I wanted to share was a site called clinic sites. It's also for website building. Um, so I'm just going to post the link in the chat for anyone that's interested. The fun thing about clinic sites is it integrates with Jane. So it pulls all your data over for you. So please take a peek at that if you want to um, reach out to us if you have more questions, but it's like, if you're, if you're like a newbie or switching over, it's a really great site as well. Um, so take a peek at that. Um, and you can always pop into our community as well and ask questions about that. So if anyone on the Jane team could pop a link to our community group into the chat as well, that would be lovely. Um, so we can continue the conversation in there about anything, about websites, anything about Jane, anything you want. And then there's one more resource I wanted to share. You were people were asking questions about um, photography. And there's a really amazing um, company. I don't know if people have heard about it before, but it's called Flytographer. I'm just going to pop the link to that in the chat as well. Um, they are, they started off for um, 
like destination photos, but they do have a headshots um, offering. I think I spelled that wrong. Sorry, typo, but you get what I mean. Um, so if you're if you're someone that doesn't have uh, a, a photographer that you know, this might be something that you could do for some headshots or photos for your team. So I just wanted to share those three three links and resources before we jump into the questions and give people a few more minutes to type some more questions into the chat and Q&A for you. There's so many. <laughs> I know there's so many <laughs> like it's, I said anyone that has to drop off feel free Lex I'm not sure how much more time you have but we'll go feel free to go through as many as you can anyone that has to leave feel free to sign out and we will send you the recording yes yes I'll answer all of these for sure um if I saw someone said they don't have access to the Q&A on their computer can you feel free to drop it in the chat and then if I don't if I forget please just drop it again um no sweat so let's start with Leanne's question. Said so thoughts on connecting a Substack newsletter to Squarespace blog area. I have both and are both are successful, but generally on Squarespace, I just do a preview of the newsletters I publish through Squarespace. Great question. I would put the whole thing on your website. Put the whole thing on your website because SEO, 1000% why, like you want that connected to your domain name. If I had lexlancaster.com and then I had a different website for my blog, any hits and traffic that I get on my website or on my blog are not going to contribute to my website. And that's kind of the point, right? So if I'm a clinic, if I was a clinic, I would want people to find my website. So if they found my blog, I definitely want them to be on my website and just having any sort of newsletter too, you can republish to your, your blog on your website if you want to. I have a lot of people who do that. They just kind of elaborate a little bit more and make it more specific. Oh, I just, oh, look at that. Okay. Bruce said, the chiropractic profession in Ontario has regulated restrictions for social media. Your experiences. Oh boy. I'm sorry. Um, I would just try to, so the thing is, is this is the same thing with testimonials. You kind of got to make it work in the way that you can. I uh, totally understand that sometimes you can't use the things that you need to use, but if you just become one of the, one of the people who just talk about what you do, you're already going to help people. How many times have we all had someone in the clinic who says, I didn't know that you treated knees as we're like treating their elbow. I'm like, uh, mm, why do you not know that? Right. People don't know. They have no idea and that's okay. So just become, become the information source on Instagram. I feel like if you share your knowledge, I don't feel like that would be against the restriction, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I feel like that would be a place where I would go. Stephanie said specifically for pelvic health, where people are Googling medical diagnoses, they may not understand. Do you not think including a list of those diagnoses on your website is helpful? Or is that more of an SEO background thing? So Stephanie, that's a great question. Uh, we do include it. So we say like you might be experiencing pelvic heaviness, but then we also say prolapse. So do the symptom that they likely will tell you, Hey, I have a lot of heaviness. I have a lot of pain. I'm leaking do that. But then also you can put those specific diagnoses because likely that's what's on the paper they're getting from a different provider. So yes, it's a great question. You can do both. Um, Nate said, what about calls to action specific to the page that they are on? Great question, Nate. So if you're like sign up, if for renegade RX, if we're like, contact us about renegade RX hundred percent, cause it's on that specific page. It's kind of like a mini sales page typically for all of the services though, they're going to be going to the same place. So if you have pelvic health, ortho recovery care, they're likely all going to be going to your clinic and booking a discovery call first, right? So that would be the same call to action. So I would just be careful if you need to do that, if you want to do that and it feels right to have a different call to action, just make sure you don't have two on the same page. It's kind of like when you're in an email and you have a bunch of calls to action in that email, people are only gonna do one of them, right? So think about that, okay? That is a great, great, great question. Heather said, do you have suggestions for photos for practices that are all virtual? There is no clinical location for photos. It's just virtual physio. Yeah, hundred percent. Just do a lifestyle branding session. That's exactly, a photographer would know exactly what you mean. You'll likely be behind a computer. You'll have a lot of photos of yourself just sitting in a chair. Um, my branding session right there and the, that picture you have right there, that's a lifestyle branding session. I'm a, I'm an online business at this point. So those are photos I did from my, my actual online business, not my clinic. So you'll just do a lifestyle session. Typically there's like a desk, you can book a house, you can book a studio, but that's what I would do. Great question. Sherry said with, with C, what if there are a number of therapists who focus in different areas, how do you target different areas on one website? Good question. So 
if you have multiple, multiple providers and they do different services, like one is a concussion therapist and one is pelvic health. If you have both of those in the clinic, I would just particularly do a concussion page and a pelvic health page, right? Cause now you're doing the same thing that I said before of having different services on different pages, right? So you can still make that happen. You can definitely still make that happen. You're welcome, Nate. I just saw your thank you. Jenny said, what is your advice re stockpiling content, building up content database, AKA how much content should we have before we start blogging, posting, et cetera. Do it right now. Do it right now. Don't stock it up. Post it. All the content consistency is key. So how do we ensure that we don't run out of content or get behind? I promise you the more that you start doing it, the more ideas you'll have. Take it from me. I did not start posting content consistently until fall of 2021 fall of 2021. And ever since then I have missed, you know, a handful of days, but as I've started to post every single day, once a day, especially on Instagram, it's a lot. But as soon as I've now I, I get to like 7 PM and I'm like, Ooh, I got to post. And I know exactly what I'm going to post. Once you start doing it, it comes better. It comes more naturally. It comes easier. The ideas come easier. They flow. So I would say, do it right now. Don't wait until you build content up, get it up there because hear me out on SEO, SEO land. The longer you are active, the better, right? So someone who started their blog in 2014 is going to have better typically SEO. This is not a hard and fast rule because it's the internet, but better SEO, better domain authority is what we call it than someone who started their blog in 2022. You with me? So get that content out there. If you have it, publish it hundred percent. Good question, Jenny. Melissa said, can you show an example of a good SEO for PT clinic, such as when they're inputting in the SEO title and SEO description? I, I would love to do that for you. Um, kind of a little bit extra on this call because I have to log into the back end of Squarespace, but let me give you a quick little gist. The SEO title just needs to be the service that you're talking about. So if it's a pelvic health, it's going to be pelvic health, physical therapy. Your SEO description is not read by Google. It is read by the person only. So Google does not use your SEO description. If you have it, the reason why it's there is because it makes someone click on your website over another website. So the goal with the SEO description is to put a keyword in there and then to also give a call to action, make it interesting and make someone want to click on it. That's what the SEO description is for. Okay. That's the SEO description. Amazing question. And if you want more on SEO on Instagram, I do a ton of SEO stuff. So feel free to hop over there. I also have a whole SEO podcast episode. Kelsey said, do you have any tips for raising SEO for one website that serves multiple practice locations? Great question. Yeah. Just put your, all your locations there. Your Google, my business should have multiple locations. Your website should have all those locations on it. And then do exactly as I had said for the services, putting those services on there and making sure that you have the towns that you work in on the website and it should pull those. There's very much so more specific topics like making secret backend pages, whatever you want to call them, unlinked pages for each town. Um, but that's a lot of work. I would say that if you want to learn more, that's definitely all the stuff that we go over in SEO school. I'll be honest. Um, because it's brick and mortar is very easy to rank on Google. It's just about the technique. So I would start with having specific services for each page, Make sure your towns are very, very well listed on your website. Put them right on there, addresses and all, and go from there. That would be my first suggestion. Okay. Good question. Heather said, suggestions for responding to a negative Google review. Oh man. I had this happen to a colleague where he never, he had never seen that person or client. So negative Google reviews are really unfortunate because you can't get rid of them. So Responding to it, typically what I would say is what I've seen a lot of people say is just, Hey, you know, I'm so sorry you had this experience. I would love to talk further about this with you, like offer to help someone and offer to make it better, if you will, in that Google review, and then leave it at that. Because most people will, will love the fact that a business is trying to correct something. Right. So I love that if someone makes a mistake, they're like, Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You felt that way. Let me help you. Let me make this right. Okay. Anonymous, someone said, if you're asking to use reviews and it's inconsistent with the practice, you ask for them. What alternative do you have for those practitioners right now? It seems like, sorry, you'll just miss out. If you're asking to use reviews and it's inconsistent with the practice, you ask for them practice to ask. For oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying if you can't ask for reviews, 
but you need to use reviews. How do you do that? If that's not what you mean, please let me know in the chat. But um, yeah, so I would dance around that by giving transformation. So showing the transformation of something rather than focusing on the reviews. Because I, I know I get it. It's a real thing. I know in Australia, they can't use reviews either. I get it. It stinks. But I would focus on doing a case study and a transformation. Okay. Anna, Squarespace promotes Biosite now. Does that fall into the same category as Linktree? Yes, it does. And I did a whole post on that on Instagram. Yes, it does. Don't use it. Put it on your website. Corey said, why do you prefer ConvertKit over Squarespace campaigns for emails? Because ConvertKit allows me to tag people and it allows me to separate things out. I, I only used Squarespace email campaigns from 2018 to 2019. Um, I switched to ConvertKit in 2020, 20, early 2020, and will never go back simply because it is one of those things where it allows me to automate so many things in my business and for um, Renegade as well. So that's why. A lot of tagging. I can put people into different categories if I want. I can create landing pages. I can sell products on ConvertKit if I really wanted to, all the things. And Squarespace email marketing is just really, really limited. Barb said, SEO descriptions when posting. We covered that. Great question. Shelly said, what microphone are you using? This is the Shure, and I think it's the MV5. Sure, I think it's the MV5, MV7. It's the cheaper one. It's not the one that requires all the external stuff. I think it's the MV5. It's either MV5 or MV7. It's the cheaper one. That's all it is. It is a great mic though, huh? I love it. I use it for podcasting. I love it so much. It's a great question. Chelsea said, can you go back to the ideal client page from the presentation? Yeah, I can. I'll scroll up right now. So if you're still on the webinar, you can take a snapshot of it. Everyone who's saying thank you in the chat, you're so, so welcome. I'm not ignoring you. I promise. I'm just really bad at doing two things at once. It's hard for me to read and talk and do all these things. Okay, there we go. There's your ideal client if you missed it. Um, perfect. Cheryl said, what should we be writing in the SEO? Look at that. Hey, we just did that. Cool. SEO description of webpage is the same thing, but we just talked about. It's all about the um, making sure you're telling someone to come visit my page. Put the, put the description um, as far as like putting a keyword in there. We're talking about pelvic health. Check out this page to learn more about pelvic health. Something like that. Make someone, it's to get someone to click on your website over someone else's. So make it more um, call to action-y and make it interesting. Do you use Hootsuite or Social Pilot or similar? No, I do not. No, I do not. I also do not use any sort of, um, a lot of people are starting to use, uh, my gosh, why am I not? The name is totally on my brain right now. Like HubSpot, like a, a, a oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Marketo? No. Well, I think that's one too. Basically just tagging all the people who come to the clinic. I can't think of what that's called, but anyway, I don't use oh, one. CRM. CRM. Yeah, CRM. Thank you so much. <laughs> right out of my mind. People are a lot of, a lot of times are saying they, they need a CRM. I actually don't feel like CRMs are helpful for small clinics. Um, but I also know that I stand on maybe an Island for that one, but I will say that we've never used one for our clinic and never really have an, an issue with that. Not saying it's right or wrong. Just saying that if you feel like you might want to use one, cool, but just understand it's only as good as the people inputting stuff. Teresa said, and also if I mispronounce your name, I'm so sorry. Just let me know. Teresa said, if you, if I don't have photos yet, is it okay to use stock photos while starting up? Yes. I tell people that all the time. You know, what's really good. This thing, our iPhones are so expensive. Use this. The camera's good. Just don't use this camera. Use this camera. iPhones are so expensive. Use it. Try it. Try your iPhone. It will work. I promise the best. So if you can't book a branding session right away and you want to just get started and put some website photos up there, use your, use your iPhone, make sure it's a newer iPhone. I won't, I won't lie to you. I think the older ones will be worse photos, but if you have a newer iPhone, you should be fine. Just book the branding session when you can thoughts on how to niche down. Oh my God. There's so many questions. Whew. Thoughts on how to niche down client for clinic, niche down client for a clinic who has 30 plus practitioners. We do massage, physio, kinesiology, Cairo. That's a huge clinic. I love that. That's amazing. Focus on your main services. So I understand that it's almost impossible to have two, bu two buckets like pelvic health and ortho. That's literally impossible for you. I get it. Um, I would more so focus on having a massage page, a physio page, a kinesio page, a chiro page, and then have what they treat underneath those pages. That's what I would do. Good question, Ann. Edward said, what does a Google My Business update look like? I can't even include a note that my hours are listed, but my 
but by appointment only no drop-ins. There's just a little button that says type an update. So it's just literally, it's almost like a Facebook post. If I'm being honest, it looks, it looks like a Facebook post. So if you drop in there, it'll say post an update. Um, and it looks like a Facebook post. That's what I mean by post an update. Sierra said, that's a cool way to spell Sierra, uh, from Sharon. Oh, from, from Sharon. Cool. What should we be writing in the SEO? Cool. We got that SEO description. Can you explain what a hidden page? Okay. Explain what a hidden page looks like for Linktree. What do you link to exactly? So when, like, if you look at my Linktree, if someone is on my Instagram, I can't click on my thing. If someone's on my Instagram, they click my link in bio. This is what they come up to. So they can see all of this stuff. They can then go to schedule discovery call. They can go to my quick fixes. They can go to my Squarespace templates. They can go to my website. You with me? So you'd link anything that you would want them to have access to from Instagram. On the back end of your website, you can choose pages to either be in this nav bar or to be on the back end of your website. If they're not in the nav bar, they're on your back end. That's the difference. So if it's nav bar, not a back end page. If it's in, if it's not in the nav bar, it's in the back end page. Okay. I know I'm I'm pushing over an hour, Jane. Jane team, please don't hate me. Do you hate me? Am I still good? No, good? keep going. Keep going as long as okay. you want. No worries. Okay. We can stay on. And yeah, that's totally fine. Loving it. I'm gonna drink real quick. Hold on. All right. Nicholas said, what is web hosting? And is your web host separate from the building backend page site like Squarespace or if they can be integrated? Yeah. So web hosting is used typically for WordPress. Um, let's just, uh, let's boil this right down. So typically web hosting will allow your website to be, I'm going to use the word better if you have WordPress. So you could actually extract it from WordPress and host it elsewhere. And then your website is on WordPress. Squarespace is all one. It's all in one. There's all, that's why I like it. Some people will come to me and they're like, I have WordPress and I have 16 logins. And I'm like, where are you? What is this? This is a lot. So Squarespace makes it easy. It's all in one spot. Great question. Edward said, I'm stunningly confused about keywords. You can't stuff your content with them. Yeah, Edward, you know it. But if they don't make up enough of your content, they aren't effective. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> Do you have a reference to simply explain how to get from that? Yeah, with respect to keywords. Uh, absolutely. So here we go. Ready? So keywords. If you know what a keyword is, let's just use the word pelvic health physical therapy. If I'm on a pelvic health physical therapy page, my keyword is pelvic health physical therapy. Okay. That was a mouthful. Yes, you don't want to stuff keywords. So you don't want to be like pelvic health, physical therapy is for pelvic health. And we are going to work on pelvic health, physical therapy, because pelvic health, physical therapy is very important for pelvic health, physical therapy. You got that's keyword stuffing. Okay. Here's my, here's my tool. My tool is to write your content out, not thinking about keywords, go back and add keywords accordingly. You know, if it sounds like it's stuffed, you know, it, it you can feel it. That's too many times. Okay. You know, if it feels like it's stuffy, so please make sure that I would say, if you're saying the same word over and over again, you know that it's going to feel weird and it doesn't sound good. It doesn't feel good to read. So please make sure you go back and just change the verbiage. Don't add as many times, right? If you're using pelvic health, physical therapy, you can also use pelvic floor, physical therapy. Those are two different things, two different keywords. All right. So read it back to yourself. Reading it out loud is helpful. If it sounds like you're stuffing keywords, you're probably right. Great question. Can you improve SEO with existing content or do you have to rewrite? Yes, you can. Yes, you can go back and improve. Google loves that because it shows that you're updating your content. Remember how I told you that Google likes updates? Yes. hundred percent. Update your old content. Try to optimize it, whatever you want to do there. Absolutely. Edward said, if you have a large body of information to post, do you break it up into multiple posts to increase SEO to prevent reading fatigue? So there's different types of posts. I would actually say Edward, Longer content, like if you have the ultimate guide to pelvic health physical therapy, you'll see one on Renegade's website. That is a 5,000 word post. So you can make an ultimate guide that's 5,000 words and then take all that content and boil it down into different blog posts. So it's a both and. You want both. You want long content and you want shorter content. The best blog posts for like the shorter content, you want to make sure they're around like 1,000 to 1,500 words. Okay. So larger posts, more like 5,000. Okay. Cool. Amazing. I'm just looking at what Sharon and Maya are saying in the chat. Cool. Thank you, Maya. Sharon, let me know if that doesn't make sense. 
Sidra said, does posting have to show your face on social media? Also, can you revisit the H1 writing style in blogs? So posting with showing your face, people love faces and Instagram loves faces. I won't lie. That's that stuff does better. We know that. Um, if you want help with social media, I'm just going to type in the chat. That's your person for Instagram. If you want help with Instagram, the Movement Maestro, she does a Instagram intensive. So if you really want to learn how to do Instagram, good. That's who I learned from. Uh, amazing. I would definitely recommend it. Yes, use your face. You use your face on posts. I just I just put together face and posts. Also, can you revisit the H1 style writing in blogs? Yeah. So blogs, typically your title is already H1, so you don't really need to worry about it. That's that's the end of it. On your website pages, you typically need to select the title of the page to be H1. That's all. Carissa said, when posting daily content, do you follow an overall strategy you planned out or just post what's on your mind? I post what's on my mind because I think, oh God, it's 6 p.m. I got to post. And then I just plan something. Typically I say, what question was I asked in the last week and I'll figure something out. Uh, and that's what I typically do. That's what a lot of people do. You, if you're someone who likes to prep, uh, Shante will tell you as well. The Movement Maestro will say, if you're going to do that and prep out content, it's a really good idea to change your captions the day of, because how I feel today is likely not how I feel tomorrow. So getting your emotions in there can be really helpful. So I always write posts and do posts day of. Cynthia said, if I'm publishing videos to YouTube, how is the best way to link these to my website? Yeah, just put your website in, put your website in the description. Um, my guy, Doc Joe O on Instagram. So he's literally Doc, D-O-C, Joe, J-O-E, O. -E -O. Uh, Shante Cofield, uh, the Movement Maestro. That right above that Instagram.com slash the Movement Maestro, that's Shante. She does Instagram coaching for businesses. Um, and Doc Joe O does YouTube for health and wellness. So if you need more YouTube stuff, go to him. But if you're doing, if you're linking your website and YouTube, just put it in the description. That's really, really great to do. And also make sure you include the full link. So you're using this full link, HTTPS, yada, yada, yada. Put the whole link in a YouTube description. Super, super important. Okay. Uh, Semi said, can we mention the price of our services? If yes, which page? You can, I have a whole podcast episode on it. Uh, I would love for you to go to my podcast. I'm pitching it because it's... I have a lot of really good feedback from that episode. I've talked all about, should you put the price on your website? I would go listen to that episode. I go into super far depth with it, like 32 minutes of depth. So I would go do that short story. You can, if you want to, um, if you don't want to don't typically people have a pricing page or they put it with a specific service. Carissa said, what is your stance on out of home marketing for an exclusively mobile house call practice? my stance on out of home marketing. I mean, meaning if people are coming to your house, you don't want to say what your address is. I get it. I would just put the town. I get it located in whatever area because you want to, you don't want people to know where you live hundred percent. Don't let people know where you live. Um, so I would just say you serve X amount of area. I serve the, like, I'm just thinking like the tri-state areas. A lot of people have tri-state areas. Um, and I serve 30 miles outside of X tree or X X uh, location, but yeah, don't give your address out. Don't do that. Jenny said, do you recommend having a professional Instagram and then a personal Instagram? No, Shantae will tell you that as well. One account. Um, I I'm not gonna, I don't want to swear on this call, but you can't ride two horses with one and then, but one Instagram, one Instagram, talk to Shantae. Um, it's way too hard to post on two. What's going to end up happening is you lose energy. You lose energy. You can't post on how many people are posting on one Instagram every single day. Not a lot. Right. So, uh, Carissa said, sorry, out of home marketing means billboards. Uh, is that a Canadian term? Cause I love learning new things. Is that a Canadian term? Hmm. Very cool. Billboards. Yeah, you can, if you want to absolutely. If you, if you can do that, why not? I would just put your, your practice name, what you do, who you help, who you help. And then just don't do your, um, address. Of course, Jenny, that was a good question. Follow Shante. She'll to let you know about the one account as well. Because we all have finite amount of energy. We all have finite amount of energy. Is Spruce Health appropriate for Canadian healthcare practitioners? Uh, I had a Canadian friend look into it recently and she actually has not gotten back to me. If you reach out to them, they do a free trial. They do a free, you don't have to reach out to them. You can go right on their website, sprucehealth.com, I believe is what it's called. 
Um, I think that's our website. Um, but yes, Sharon, I promise I will, I will get to your question as well. Hopefully you'll get the recording. Um, yes, I would reach out and do the trial. Lean, lean. Is that how I say your name? Lean said, did you answer questions that were asked when we signed up for the webinar? I got here late. I didn't an answer those. I'm not sure if there were, but it's Lena. L Lane. Lena. Lena. It's Danish. Very nice. I love that. Thank you for correcting me. It's no problem. I didn't um, get those questions, but I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to type it out right now. I've been I've, or something to that effect. Um, awesome. So do you want me to just sort of ask you? You can ask I, if you want. Go ahead. Covered? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just wasn't sure if you covered it in your presentation, but I've heard that, uh, or what's the best hosting to use? I've heard SiteGround is the way to go and, and then WordPress for the actual website people. So you'll see if you get the, when you look at the recording, I recommend Squarespace. I never recommend WordPress. So I'm going to be the person who steps back and says, if you want to work on WordPress, I have WordPress recommendations and I can send them to you, but I always recommend Squarespace. I've seen people use SiteGround and they like it. So I'm going to say not my expertise. I'm so sorry. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you for correcting me on your name. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you for saying it right. <laughs> Um, someone anonymous said not directed to Lex will the recording. Yes, I believe we're they're sending the recording. The Jane team is sending the recording. Yeah, absolutely. We'll send the recording after this. Um, and we can we'll also go through the questions. A lot of them were answered during the session, but we can also share those and generate some content around that as well. Um, I did want to do a bit of a time check because we have gone 30 minutes <laughs> over. So I'm just wondering if we maybe wanted to take the rest of the questions and maybe try and answer them in some sort of written content or some video content for social. Um, I just feel like if we keep going, it just keeps generating more questions and we definitely want to get to everything. Um, so I think we've only got two, two yeah. left on there. Did you want to answer the last two? And then, so we'll just like cap it after Chelsea's and then we can answer some of the questions that were sent in via the registration as well as any in the chat that we didn't get to. We'll connect and figure out how we want to answer those. Yes, that's totally fine. I'm game because okay. I'll do it on the podcast. Podcast makes it easy. Do you worry about losing SEO horsepower by moving from WordPress to Squarespace with traditional transitional domain? Yes, but no, your SEO will tank 100%. Um, at first it will tank and then it comes back because if you build with SEO principles at hand on the new site, everything comes back to where it was. You just need to make sure all of your pages are the exact same link. So if it's slash pelvic health, it needs to be slash pelvic health again. Great question, um, but it will tank at first. Chelsea said, my husband and I are doing a startup. I'm a dietitian. He's a network networker for healthcare offices. Cool. Do you think it's appropriate to just have one website or should we make two different ones? Because they are two very different services. They are two very different services. You need two different websites. Yes. hundred percent. Cause that'd be really confusing for a consumer. Really, really confusing. Think about what's easy for you and yes. Wi-Fi networker. Cool. Yeah. I would do two separate services. Great question. Amazing. Look at that. We got through them all. Holy smokes. Thank you so much, Lex. This has been so great. So much information. Um, yeah. yeah, and we'll see everyone again soon. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing anyone want to connect on Instagram. I will talk to you there. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great Thank day. You. Bye.